Good morning and welcome to Morocco. My name is Caroline and I am traveling around this gorgeous country, not only with my other half Andy, but a set of newly found friends because we've joined on to an intrepid tour. This morning we've woken up at this gorgeous hotel here in Chef Chauen, but there's six of us who are gonna be getting into a private taxi and going about 40 minutes north of here to a hiking trail. It's an incredibly interesting drive through the mountains. This morning as we were eating breakfast, the sun came up and we spotted that there was a cloud inversion. But for the vast majority of the journey, we've just been driving through fog saying, I'm pleased that this trail is going to take us to a waterfall and not some epic viewpoint, because I think that if it was going to be an epic viewpoint, there was a potential that we would just look out into nothing but fog. But as we've pulled up at the trailhead, all of the fog in this part of the valley is dispersed. It's a lot more touristy than what I was expecting it to be, but I think because we've come very early on, it, it's still very, very quiet, so hopefully we'll have some peace and quiet on the trail. So, if I was to drop you here and didn't tell you which country you were in, what country would you hazard a guess as this being? I would think I was in the US. direction to get back to the confluence and then head up the gorge. The hiking trail is 5.5 kilometers out and then naturally because we're hiking up a canyon it's going to be another 5.5 kilometers back. I get the impression though that it's probably not overly strenuous because the amount of cafes that are towards the trailhead says to me that this is a very touristy hiking trail. If you're planning on coming to this area and you're by any chance watching this video because you too would like to come out to these waterfalls, for a little bit of context, we, through our intrepid guide, who did this with our hotel reception, they booked us the taxi. We've paid 400 dirhams for the transport. The taxi driver has dropped us off, but he has actually left, which we weren't expecting. We just told him to come back at two o'clock and we will pay him when we get back to Chef Chauen. As well as having plenty of places to be able to stop for lunch, snacks, or be able to pick up drinks, it also seems to be incredibly well serviced and makes it a very dignified hike because there's plenty of toilets too. The standard rate seems to be two dirhams to use those toilets. After getting to Forks on the trail, we've needed to choose where to go. And we've got to this cafe where I thought, oh, it's really helpful. They've put all of these blue arrows showing us exactly where the trail goes. Turns out those blue arrows are just pointing us in the direction of their restaurant. And in fact, you have to ignore those to follow the path in the opposite direction. I think we've gotten a little bit lucky at this time of the day because no staff were there, but I can see how clever it is. You walk onto their property and then they start saying, oh, please, you know, sit down, have a drink, have some food. And it just becomes that little bit trickier. Whereas obviously if you skirt past the restaurant, it's a little bit easier to avoid them. We've drawn the conclusion that these huge concrete stepping stones that allow us to get over the river were probably just made out here. No doubt they'll have put the dry, powdery concrete mixture onto mules or donkeys. And then because there's plenty of water coming from the river, I'll have just used that to make them because otherwise I cannot see how on earth anyone could be bothered to lug all of these out this way. This way it is. 
I say that the trail past all of those cafes and restaurants is much better maintained. And then it takes like a bit of a corner. And when it does, all of those cafes and restaurants have completely disappeared. And I would also say that the hiking trail is in much worse condition. And there's lots of paving blocks to get across the river that's missing. So you're having to do a bit more scrambling over rocks. Up on the cliff face we heard this immense noise, it definitely sounded like wildlife and I just assumed that it must have been some kind of bird of prey. And we all lucked up and there was a whole load of monkeys, a couple of them were up in a tree so those guys are the easiest ones to spot but there were more clambering around the cliff face and I've got a feeling that the noise that we heard was them probably notifying their family or friends to say hey there's humans and they were all sat there watching us very carefully and likewise we were watching them very carefully I think for very different different reasons but luckily there was quite a distance between the two of us because we have heard that monkeys can be quite aggressive and I'm guessing like most wildlife if they do feel like they are threatened that's when they're probably more likely to become aggressive so no one thankfully has decided to go clambering up the cliff face to get closer photographs. Without a shadow of a doubt, the more challenging that this trail is becoming, the more rewarding that it's becoming. We have not seen any of those cafes with <laughs> brightly coloured plastic tables and chairs for quite some time now and instead all of that has switched over into stunning landscapes, really really amazing wildlife so as I said about the monkeys a little bit earlier on but we've also seen things like butterflies, dragonflies, lizards. If you're planning on coming out here and you're wondering about whether to keep on going past all of the cafes and restaurants, 100%. One more time. Apparently it's 15 minutes from here. We decided to purchase a little bit of pep in our step because the taxi driver isn't just waiting for us, he's coming back at two o'clock and time is fast running away from us. But our understanding is, is that there's supposed to be an epic waterfall at the end of this trail and I'd really love to see it. It looks like Devon took quite a liking to the donkey and the donkey seems to have taken quite a liking to him because it's now following us along the hiking trail. We just passed a very kind couple who said dos minutes. I think because we've just been bucking it so much, my brain's all over the place. And I was like, mercy! And then I thought, wait, no, dos, that's not French. There seems to be a lot of smoke in these woods and I had wondered if maybe that was people who've set up barbecues and usually they would be at the end of the trail. I really hope this is worth it. <laughs> This is it, this is the waterfall at the end. I kept on saying throughout, I'm like, I really hope it's gonna be worth it. And I think to be honest, if you'd come in this spring, this would probably be pretty spectacular. But in the autumn, after a very dry summer, it's a little bit more of a trickle. It is pretty, but I think really the hike out here has been what's been the most rewarding part of it. Perhaps some of those smaller waterfalls, a little bit further down is slightly more impressive. If you're watching this video because you're thinking about coming and doing these waterfalls and you two are also planning on coming in autumn, we bumped into another couple who sort of started around about the same time as us and they started coming back ages ago. And we said to them, you've not been to the end already, have you? And they said, no, they'd only gone as far as the smaller waterfall and they were going back because there's then another canyon that you can do from the trailhead that takes you to a bridge or an archway that's right up in the canyon wall. So that could be an alternative to do rather than coming up to this slightly disappointing waterfall. Oh yeah. Whilst the waterfall might have been a little bit on the disappointing side in comparison to photographs that I'd seen online, really you can't take away from the fact that it's still pretty spectacular with all of the greenery. 
We've been to Morocco before back in 2017 and on the last trip we headed south of Morocco so it was very desert like. All of our pictures were just orange unless we were coming across things like the Zalij or the mosaics and I just feel like walking through this canyon you wouldn't know that it was Morocco. I would have just assumed if someone had dropped me here that we were in like one of the US national parks like Yosemite or Zion or somewhere like that. So I've got to take it for its merit. It, it is absolutely gorgeous and really, really different side to Morocco that I've just not seen yet until today. Just because of the amount of time that we've got left, we're just going to stop for a quick snack, even though you could get full on meals such as tagines at so many of the cafes and restaurants. One of the things that I've definitely picked up on is the lack of litter on this trail. And as we've gone up it, I have seen a few bins and there's one just here by the waterfall. So when I finish off the banana, I don't even need to do the whole pack in pack out. I can just chuck it straight into one of the litter bins and it's obviously collected by someone really helpful. <laughs> I think that's probably the best photo I've got of you, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> 